Okay, so once more, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, where you are joining this presentation from. So right now I'm at, uh, I'm, I'm basically uh, on Zoom as well as on Student Solution fan page. So some of you can definitely see me uh, live uh, on Facebook fan page, whereas on Zoom, you will be going through the presentation I'm going through. So uh, if you have any questions during this time, you're more than welcome to, uh, to leave, your voice, uh, leave your message on Facebook, or if you want to uh, comment or leave a message on Zoom, you are more than welcome to do that. Uh, we will be trying to answer them as much as we can, but at the same time, we will be uh, answering at the end of the presentation as we go along. So, uh, study in the UK. This this uh, presentation is all about study in the UK. And uh, if you have any questions regarding to a study in Canada, uh, we have a session on Monday. So you probably you can uh, join that and register for that event as well. Uh, specifically, this is all about uh, study in the UK. So the first thing you would uh, like to know what a student solution is and student solution Canada and what they are uh, what they are specifically specialized in UK and Canada. The reason being because we are professionals who have studied or worked in UK in uh, in different times of uh, in different times of the year and different time of uh, last in last 10, 10, 15 years we have been either working in the UK or we have either studied or graduate from UK at a bachelor's level as a master's degree. So we have an understanding of how the process for application works in the UK and quite a bit of in-depth information in terms of how to make an application for scholarships as well as you know any any uh, real time experiences with uh, as an international students you may have uh, faced we definitely can share the experiences from our our students who have graduated and studied in the uk uh, we have about like uh, uh, we've been in this industry for more than 17 years so you can see that we have been a very specialized uh, specialized uh, experience in this uh, study in the uk product and uh, that is why we we believe that we may we do not work with different countries but the specifically uk just because we want to make sure that you get a you get a, a real time uh, uh, answer to your questions as well as the experiences as much as we can uh, we can answer to you it's not just about the admission process or scholarships or uh, you know how to make a study study permit there's a very general stuff which uh, which is covered uh, in the whole application process but at the same time, a lot of questions have been asked about like the job prospects or accommodation or how far the, you know, if I'm able to uh, find a 20 hours job, those kind of stuff. We try to answer them as much as we can because we have a lot of uh, students in the UK who, uh, who basically share their thoughts as well. And it's a really good opportunity for you uh, to, you know, learn those experiences from us. We are UCAS site Register Center as well. And uh, the best part about it is that uh, in education industry, uh, there are a few very renowned uh, certifications which, uh, uh, which uh, you probably can get. Uh, uh, and the reason is that it helps you to make sure that you are updating yourself uh, in the current industry. So those who are on the Zoom, I uh, just wanted to let you know if there is a technical glitch, uh, sometimes it happens, it's not our, in our control but you can rejoin and the rejoin process is the same as uh, what has been mentioned on the email and uh, you definitely can you know it's going to take more than not more than five seconds to rejoin so if you uh, if you are disconnected for some reason you probably can join and by clicking on the same link so um I'm trying to go as uh, as uh, quick as I can, but the important thing is we are trying to cover as much information for you on the UK uh, perspective. And this is why I'm saying this uh, to, I mean, there's a lot of information which we would like to share and answer your question as well, but I'm pretty sure the presentation is gonna be covering a lot of uh, general questions which you may have it, but at the same time, uh, we are trying to uh, share the information which which is very beneficial for you at the same time. So this is what we will be covering. And of course, we will be going through one by one. So a lot of people uh, are sometimes not sure if uh, UK is Great Britain or England. So UK is basically 
comparison of four, four countries, England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. And it is very imperative to understand that Northern Ireland is a part of a UK. So it's basically not uh, like uh, like the part of the like Ireland country. So whenever you say Northern Ireland is understood and it's, it's part of UK and anything which is coming under uh, UK uh, educational law or immigration law, it falls under Northern Ireland as well. For example, a lot of people have asked about if that two years post-study visa is going to be is going to be acceptable uh, if we graduate from from uh, Northern Ireland too. So yes, it will be. It has been announced. It will be implemented uh, um, uh, soon, but it depends uh, when. And uh, anybody who's graduating in next year, that's what they have announced. Uh, UK VI have announced that. Uh, I will say UK immigration or UK government have announced that uh, if you will be graduating after uh certain dates of 2021 you probably uh, you will be allowed for uh working there or staying there for two on a two-year post-study visa so that is applicable to every every part of uk uh and as you can see this map is basically gives you a pretty decent idea about quite a bit of popular cities uh, across uh, across uh, uk of course london being the bell london being the the most prominent one and then of course birmingham and then of course we have manchester the three very popular and big cities of the of the uk but that it also uh, suggests you where belfast is and uh, where for example the other other big cities are located So the map already had mentioned about those main main cities of the UK as well, just to give you the region where exactly they are looking. For example, if you're looking about London, of course it's in London, but uh, like places like Barnmouth or Lincoln or Leicester or Le Keel, for example, they are all in England area, whereas uh, universities like Cardiff or Bangor, they are in Wales. So all part of UK. But they are, of course, I'm just trying to uh, to make an aware of where, where exactly these universities are. These are very uh, popular choices among the students in recent times. And we have noticed and we want to make sure so that they have they do understand that this is uh, the, this is these are the schools which are very, you know, uh, which cities they are from and which region they belong to. Now, this is imperative going back to the map that uh, normally a lot of international students do ask that uh, and taking London as the criteria that how far the universities or the cities from London. So the best part of the UK, of course, is it's not a huge country like Canada, for example. So the traveling time between one city to two to another city is not significant. Um, like my personal experience being like maybe from, from Southampton, which is the south of the UK or Bournemouth, if you want to go to the Inverness, it's not going to take more than maybe six, seven hours uh, of uh, train journey. Uh, of course, the flight duration would be much more uh, quicker. So for for Belfast from London, it's going to be, I think, about like 90 minutes. So it's very convenient in terms of wherever you are uh, in the UK. Uh, of course, at the end of the day, I mean, you can't be in Edinburgh and come to London every weekend because it's going to be like three, four hours of train journey, right? um so it is convenient it is very very small country comparison to in comparison to to canada but uh, uh this is this is what the idea whole about is that all universities all universities in different regions in different part of of uh, of the uk so this is very critical for a lot of uh, students who are joining us from uh, um India and Pakistan, but of course, uh, Canadians as well, because uh, a lot of uh, Canadians who are applying um, on the basis of their high school grades, uh, they normally apply for, for a bachelor's year one, which is which is fantastic. And they are eligible for, or for the direct entry to the bachelor's program. However, UK is a very flexible education system. They have quite a bit of range and that is applicable as per, as per different markets. So, the presentation is all about educating the international students uh, who wanted to study in the in the UK. Now, this presentation can be uh, these students can be from different part of the world. So, whatever is applicable to your side, um, that that goes accordingly. So, for example, Foundation Year One, um, sorry, Foundation Year is a one-year program. It's typically for people from or students from Pakistan or India or Sri Lanka who basically have an education not equivalent to A levels. Uh, it can be higher um, HSC, for example, 
or 10 plus two from India. And if they're not able to get into the uh, bachelor's program year one because of their grade, they, I mean, if they have less than 75%, they have to do a one year foundation year. Uh, year one through various uh, standalone institutions such as the Study Group, N2, Navitas, um, and you basically, what is year one is, it's a part of bachelor's year one, but you are basically studying in a, in a institution like N2 or Study Group. Um, the idea is that if you, for example, wanted to go to a particular institution which is associated with study group, say for example, Huddersfield or uh, Aberdeen and a few of the other uh, universities uh, linked with the study group. And if you do not qualify to get into the year one to the university directly, for example, you might have missed an IELTS score by 0.5, for example. So either you have to do a pre-sessional English program at the university level, or you can get into the year one program in the study group, and that will cover your uh, year one. Year one. Now, having said that, what it means is that uh, once you graduate, you basically uh, are going into the into the year two. Once you once you of course graduate from uh, once you pass your year one, and then you are be able to go into the year two. Just give me two seconds. I'm just going to see if there are any queries. Feel free to leave your comments and queries uh, <clears throat> either on Facebook if you are live there, um, um, and if you are on the Zoom, then of course you can leave message at uh, <clears throat> at the bottom where it says the give me just one setting. I'm going back to that. So where it says the uh, the inbox, uh, there is a query box at the bottom, and you definitely can leave a message there. We are going to come back to that uh, once we are done with the presentation. So so the another thing is um, the in the UK education system is the foundation degree or HND, which is National Diploma Program. So it's again the two years program. You have to get into uh, in order to get into it, you have to have a A levels equivalent education. Now, for example. Canadians will be having a high school diploma uh, from any of the provinces, and they will be eligible to get into this program, whereas uh, uh, students from Pakistan or India or different places need to have, a, a, uh, have an, an education which is equivalent to A-levels, most probably about like uh, 13 years of education from like 10 plus two or HSC plus additional one year. And then once you graduate from a foundation degree, uh, you basically can get into the final year of a, of a, a bachelor's program. Now, as as one of the slides mentioned earlier, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you, there are like about 131 universities. So the transfer of credits from from year one or from a foundation degree to relevant um, progression year depends upon individual universities. Some may be a guaranteed route. But at the same time, it's not possible. For example, if you do, if you do a year one, uh, and you're expecting that you will be getting into say Oxford University, that's not going to be uh, possible because the Oxford universities uh, or the universities like in Russell Group may have different criteria, and they <clears throat> expecting students to start from year one. I'm not saying that this is not possible, but this is what most of the post 92 universities, I would say, is more, is more are uh, uh, flexible in terms of you know accepting the credits but uh, there is a possibility that quite a few universities may accept your credits but many of them will not as well so it depends upon where you apply or where you want to go so make sure you are choosing the year one accordingly and you're choosing the right uh, uh, program uh, for example if you do if you want to do a business uh, element program or engineering make sure that you are doing the year one according to that program so once you're transferring your credit to year two you are basically meeting the uh, requisites. Uh, the other things are uh, top up program. Now, this is specifically for those who are having a, a three year advanced diploma, especially from Canada, for example. A lot of students from Canada do uh, go to community colleges here and they have a three year advanced diploma program. Um, typically, for business and computing related program, it's pretty easy. Like if you have a, uh, if you have a three year advanced diploma program with 2.7, 2.8 CGPA, uh, that that makes you eligible to apply to the top up program. So, and that top up program means the final year entry of a three years program. So, three years in the UK, the bachelor's is three years honors. So, if you get if you have a three year advanced diploma from any of the community colleges, 
As far as um, some universities have progression agreements with uh, quite a bit of colleges in Canada, India, Malaysia, Singapore. Um, so it's easy, pretty easy for them to transfer. But if you do, if your college is not listed, then for sure uh, the universities will look into the curriculums and then will decide if you will be eligible. But most of the college, most of the universities in the UK will look into um, the credit transfer applications. As I mentioned, uh, bachelors are three years in the UK, which is an honors degree. Uh, LLB uh, is three years in bachelors, but in the UK there is another. Uh, this is special um, a degree for those who already have a four-year undergrad uh, degree from their home country and they wanted to do a law now. So maybe they have decided to do the business program initially, and then now they wanted to do a law degree. So that is a fast track two years uh, also called as a as accelerated llb program for two years and uh, once you graduate with that degree of course will be eligible to do the master's program after it so llb is a very um, a special degree in the uk which has a three-year program as well as two-year program as well the masters are oops sorry masters is a one-year program everybody knows that that's why you can get a lot of lot of applications for the master's program and high demand because it's a very a uh, flexible uh, degree starting in January as well as September. September being the most uh, uh, most important, I would say, or most uh, uh, large uh, is the large uh, session for the UK universities where you find a lot of universities offering different kind of programs starting with medicine, pharmacy, physiotherapy. Uh, of course, there are all other programs like you know psychology, social work, those programs. But there are a lot of universities also for January session as well, which you uh, can apply for. And especially uh, on the basis of current scenario, this is a very uh, important for the master's program uh, who are looking for applying to master's program that you can apply for September session and then defer uh, to January if the same program uh, is offered in January too, depending upon the scenario, uh, current scenario what's going on. Um, another master's which is uh, very, diff uh, very different, like as I mentioned, that will be two years. This uh, few of the masters are two years as well like uh, social work or physiotherapy pre-registration, uh, uh, pre-register uh, program, or some of the master's program which requires a placement or which has a placement as a part of their master's program. So only a few, a very few of the master's program are two years, otherwise most of the master's program is only one year. And I mentioned this, that the uh, um, bachelor's programs, yes, it is a three years program, but if you're looking for coming to a physiotherapy, pro, uh, to a, a medicine program, for example, of course, that's a five years program. And uh, if you want to do a pharmacy, normally many universities offer a three years pharmacy program, but they also have integrated uh, a master's element for the for the physiotherapy, uh, with a physiotherapy bachelor's degree. So it has become now four years. So if you go uh, to a three years pharmacy program, it will call it as B form. Whereas if you go for a four years, it becomes an MFO. And many universities now have decided that they are basically, like for example, Keel University. They are very one of the very uh, um, prominent uh, universities for pharmacy. They are offering four years MFO. Just to give you uh, a little bit update that uh, Ulster University in Northern Ireland is the top university in pharmacy for last uh, four or uh, three, four years in terms of their ranking and one of the best schools in pharmacy. So uh, in terms of the admission process or admission deadline, just gonna see stuff if everything is fine. Sorry, I'm just trying to uh, see at the same time that if uh, the archive uh, people are able to listen and uh, they are able to the queries there so just to making sure okay so mm, there was i i was basically yeah. so united uh, uh so in terms of the admission process uh, uh, it has to be understood that for various applications the deadline uh, deadline uh, varies so the bachelor's, uh, most of the bachelor's programs, uh, of course, goes uh, till the end of uh, June 30th. And so if you are applying, thinking to apply to uh, apply to the UK universities, regardless what the conditions is right now, you still can apply. But at the same time, 
different programs have different uh, uh, deadlines. For example, medicine program or all those um, science programs related to like medicine, dentistry, or other programs which are related to that, they have the strict deadlines of October 15. So you can't make an application for the following year after October 15. So if you're looking for a medicine program, um, you for 2021, you your first bet would be to apply by October 15. However, uh, good news is there is another university is coming up, um, Brunel, which is offering their medicine program as well. And they are very flexible in terms of their admission uh, deadline. And if you feel that you haven't applied or you didn't get the chance to apply to enough universities, um, Brunel University a Medicine Program will be launching in September 2021. So you can make an application after October 15 as well uh, in Brunel University, which is in London. Um, so remember one thing that for uh for uh, for so so in order to make an application you just need to make sure that uh, you are uh, you are complying with the deadline so that once you make an application the university will be able to uh look into the, that in in consider with all all other applicants who have applied for the master's program there is a such no deadline though you need to apply as soon as you can in terms once you have your um ielts score or once you have your transcript for example the reason being, if you wanted to, there is a lot of scholarship opportunities for uh, for bachelors, of course, but as far as masters as well. And in order to make an application for masters and to see the chances for you to get the scholarships, it is very important that you should apply, you know, um, and before Christmas, I would say, end of the year, uh, in order to be, you know, qualified for uh, or you know applying for uh, for the scholarship. So for a scholarship, you can't. You need to have an uh, at least a conditional offer, and then you apply for various external scholarships, which you can definitely, if you are eligible, and if you have like a very good uh, you know, extracurriculum um, background and you have very good grades as well, you probably will be eligible for it. And I will encourage that those who are looking for September 2021, you should start thinking to you know seriously about. Uh, looking to those external scholarship uh, options. And this is where student solution come into play. And we can give you a lot of options for this because uh, as I mentioned, the expertise we have in this thing, we definitely can share. The challenges, of course, there are, you need to have very great, good certain grades. And of course, you need to work a little bit harder on your personal statement or essay in terms of, you know, why you think you will be the best option for the scholarship. Um, UK universities are very flexible, most of them. And of course, as I mentioned, there are 131 universities. So it's very strong school to school, but universities pretty, pretty uh, um, uh, flexible in terms of accepting scan copies. Now, most of the post-92 universities, um, post-1992 universities uh, do accept uh, scan copies. Uh, like if you send them over the uh, you know, application through the application portal, or if you feel that you, uh can send them over the email that is always a possibility uh but uh, uh as i mentioned that documents which is very um mandatory in your applications can be your uh, reference letters your last year's transcript um your passport copy these are all mandatory documents in terms of you know application process uh, the bachelor's program can be, uh, I mean, there you, you can apply through uh, through UCAS, and this is where we were mentioning that we are you one of the UCAS registered center in, in Toronto and Canada. So, so you can apply through UCAS, but uh, quite a few universities also, especially at this time of the year when the applications for the uh, UCAS, uh, the first deadline has been passed and the second deadline, which is January 15, has also been passed. Uh, you can still make a direct application. And the reason is, is it's easier for a university to, to make an offer as soon as, uh, you know, as early as probably like 48 hours. Quite a few universities have been uh, very, very uh, uh, vigilant in terms of responding back to students' uh, application within 48 hours if the applications have been made direct, uh, if a direct application has been made. Whereas if you go through the UCAS, uh, you basically need to, uh, need to apply to five schools if you want, wish, and then of course have to wait for, for all five universities to make a decision. Um, or you basically, you know, decisions can be take anything from maybe uh, maybe two weeks to uh, four weeks, depending upon the workload. But 
I will suggest at this moment of time, the direct application will be the best route to, to you know, get the offer and then you know, start making decisions because we are just running uh, out of time for, for September sessions because we are already into the last uh, or into the you know, uh, middle of the May. And then of course, you know, we have to make sure that you are making application for study permit and you know, arranging your funds as well. So direct application will be the best route for now. Um, just a quick reminder that in case of IT glitch, or in case if you get disconnected, please rejoin through the link you provided on the email. So the UCAS fee for, there's no, this is another best part comparing to the UK uh, in terms of Canadian and, and North American institutions that the U, there is no application or administrative fees associated with the, uh, with the application. If you are making a direct application to the university, it's free of cost. There's no cost in terms of applying to the universities. But if you are applying through UCAS, there's a one nominal fee, which is 20 pounds for one application or 25 pounds for multiple choices from two to five. Now, uh, this is not per university, this is in total. So it doesn't matter if you apply to two or if you apply to five, you're only paying 25 pounds. So that makes sense, right? I mean, if you're, if you're paying 25 pounds, why not apply to five universities? Um, and application for the masters as I mentioned is always direct. And uh, you, there's no concern, there's no uh, application fee to the university level. And then, of course, you can, you know, uh, making sure as far as your application is con uh, is completed and supported with the relevant documents, uh, it has to. Make, you need to make sure that uh, you need to make sure that uh, uh, the application has been supported with all the documents uh, uh, as as uh, as supported for your application so the university can make a firm and quick decision. Let me just uh, go through some of the questions quickly. If there, I can see any questions here is going on. So, okay. So, So other things about United Kingdom application is that every universities do require a deposit once you get a conditional offer. So conditional offer is most of the time it's about um, academic site, like a lot of international students who are applying from a country where English is not being the main uh, main um, uh, like uh, if you if 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 they require an IELTS or TOEFL if your English is uh, if the country, if your uh, studies has not been in English, for example, or it's not in from an English speaking country. Uh, but uh, if you fulfill all the academic requirements, most of the universities do require a deposit from 1000 pounds to up to 50, 50 percent tuition fees. So it varies from school to school. Uh, the second thing is once the deposit has been made, you will be receiving a confirmation for acceptance for studies, which is required for tier four visa. So all these top three points are interlinked to each other. So once you get an application, once you process an application, or once you once you have applied, once you get an offer, you basically will be needed required to make a deposit once an offer has been made. And then, of course, once the deposit has been made, you get a cast letter, which is confirmation of acceptance for studies from the UK university, and that makes you eligible to apply to tier four visa. Now, remember, there are a lot of. Uh, various uh, types of applications or names of uh, the visa in UK VI website, just to make sure that you are applying for tier four general, uh, if you're applying, um, of course, alone as an, uh, as an individual. A lot of international, a lot of scholarships available, which is guaranteed most of the time, uh, anything from 1,000 pounds to 3,000 pounds. So if as soon as you basically make an application and if you are into the university, you are you definitely will be getting anything from 1000 to 3000 pounds scholarship depending upon the universities of course um like for example um ulster university uh, you know i mean if you apply to to their international foundation program they are offering 4000 pounds scholarship 2000 for your accommodation and 2000 for for academic side similarly for any bachelor's and master's program as far as you meet the prerequisites as it's, it's, it's a very like, for example, if you go to pharmacy program and physiotherapy, it's a very, uh, you know, competitive university, high ranked university. So the application process is not that uh, very easy that you will get into it. You need to go through certain you know, documents and then, of course, making sure your application has been presented very well in terms of your, you know, reflecting your uh, 
your work experience, extracurricular activities, and then of course they will do the interview as well. So it is quite a bit of uh, steps involved. And then of course you will be, if you are guaranteed, a, if you are given a, a given a, a admission, then you will be able to get the scholarship from one thousand to three thousand pounds. Then of course we come to we come to the merit based scholarship, which is more than twenty percent. Uh, some universities may give you about like up to 50% as well. For example, Bangor universities, I know their business programs offer about 50% scholarship, uh, which is called Vice Chancellor International Scholarship. And uh, so that that is dependent and that requires a bit much more uh, things with your applications once you and it's not a, it's not something which you make, uh, uh, you know, you make an application and the university will, you know, give you a scholarship. You probably need a little bit more efforts to you know, you know, show your uh, worth in terms of universities giving you more scholarships, and why you why you will be qualified for that scholarship. That is very important to you know mention for uh, for yourself in in uh, in this uh, in the application. I will just just give me two seconds, and I'm gonna be be right back. For those who are on Facebook looking us live, I think there has been a little bit glitch on Zoom. So give me just two seconds, please. Sorry guys who are watching us live on Facebook. I'm just uh, uh, having a little bit of uh, technical issues on Zoom. So I'm just uh, invite, uh, just um, um, going through that. So give me just one minute and I will be back shortly in terms of uh, going through the presentation further. Okay, so we are back uh, to Facebook Live, and we are good on on uh, um, Zoom as well. I'm just going to be sharing the screen, guys. Can you see my screen now? And can you hear me? And that is I'm talking about on Zoom. Excellent, excellent. So I'm going to put this on on the screen right now and then we are good to go so uh so you're back live on facebook as well continuing from where we left so this uh, as i mentioned earlier that a, a married british scholarship is from 20 percent to full full time uh, uh to full scholarship in fact quite a few students of ours have got uh, full scholarship like 100 percent of uh, the postgrad level so i will suggest those who are applying for post-grad level, uh, try apply as soon as you can, uh, especially if you're looking for September 2021. Don't delay your application beyond, uh, I would say, end of September, October, because of one few of the uh, few of the scholarships, external scholarships, that is, uh, their deadline is around end of November. So you, you don't, probably don't want to miss that, right? So if you have really good grades about like maybe about 80% and above or wealth of experience about 20 percent 20 years i would say in terms of you know your um at yeah, the managerial level and those those kind of things so do discuss with us uh, of course you have the contact detail or whatsapp number mentioned here uh just a general question not applicable for a lot of students but because they're more concentrating on their studies but uh, 30 hours per week is allowed in the united kingdom uh, during the term time whereas the students can also work a full time during when the semester is off. So it's a good opportunity to students not only just to earn money, but at the same time to get some work experience, ex international exposure in terms of, you know, working, um, getting some work environment experience in the UK. It's, it's always beneficial. It's always beneficial when you're going from a country, uh, from your country to a new country, you wanted to explore some opportunities and why not if it's been, if it's been allowed to work while you're studies. But just to give you a heads up that 
just to give you a heads up that uh, uh, just to give you a heads up, I, I will be answering to all the questions uh, by the end of this presentation, uh, Sayed. So I will keep this in mind and definitely we'll be getting back to that. Um, so just keep this in mind that yeah, working is allowed, but at the same time, studying in the UK is demands a lot from individuals. So it's not just about you're going to the classes and you're attending it. It's all about your uh, self-study time you're going to spend for yourself. For example, um, because we, we get the training from the universities, departments individually, we always been informed that the universities may not be having five days classes, but it may be like three we three uh, three days classes a week but at the same time this is expected that the students will be doing a lot of self studies or group studies or group assignments by themselves so i would say yeah maybe uh, you will be studying like three days a week uh, and then they expect or you expect yourself that if you are gonna invest the same kind of amount of time uh for yourself through group studies or research work then you really, you know, need to make sure that you are able to get good grades and able to, you know, graduate at the same time. So keep this in mind. Um, it's, it's a very uh, appealing thing that you can work 40 hours during. Yeah, 40 hours during off time is possible for sure because you are doing nothing, but at the end, you are more focused on the work. Um, students who are graduating, and this has been just announced in October 20, 2019. It has not been implemented yet, but this will be most likely implemented. Depends. So we are all looking forward to that. So in the UK, post-study visa is two years. So if you graduate in um, 2021, say July, June, and this time of the time of the year afterwards, you will be eligible. The international students will be eligible to stay there for two years on a postgraduate visa. Now this has been announced. When it's going to be implemented, we are looking forward to that. But 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 this is a uh, this is something which was uh which has been a part of history in uk education and they were used to doing this thing till 2012 i believe so this is good news for international students because a lot of international students wanted to study in the uk and wanted to work afterwards so again coming back to the point of do the your studies and do make sure that once you graduate you get the post study visa as soon as you can um so these are uh, again there are 131 universities and we work quite a few universities about like uh through there are some of our, our some of them are direct or some are through our our um other partners as well but these are quite a few universities which are uh, we are coming across in terms of their inquiries programs they offer uh, as i mentioned every university is maybe different in terms of their in terms of their entry requirements in terms of their rankings uh, some are, of course, top 10 universities, top 20 universities come in Russell Group as well. Some are, you know, very particular uh, uh, in their particular program. For example, if you're looking, say, for example, if you wanted to go uh, to a pharmacy program. So and if you are considering that uh, I wanted to go to a university where my program is recognized and uh, the, you know, I'm going to a top school in that in, in that uh, program or in that uh, area. Then of course you need to you know check uh, guardian ranking university for that and then you make decision accordingly. So it is important to understand the ranking in the UK is not just on general basis; it's also on academic on on subject basis too. So for example, if you go and check Ulster University, uh, Ulster University for pharmacy physiotherapy, you will figure out that they are one of the top universities um, in the UK for last three four years. And then of course they're um you know the facilities the, the the faculty itself the student support system is phenomenal i have my personal experience in terms of going to elster uh, last year so i was really amazed with the location with kind of support they give to students of course but at the same time there are a lot of other universities so for example uh if you look for a two years llb program uh, uh bangor for example which is in north wales so there are quite a few of variations in terms of the programs available in universities um and uh, you know, I mean, if you have any questions about any of the universities and program you want to go into, it depends upon where you want to go, what kind of budgets you have, and what kind of academics you have. Like for example, Durham is a, is in in northeast of UK, one of the very prominent top, uh, I would say top twenty university in the UK. Very good in terms of their uh, research. They are very high ranked university, as I mentioned. Uh, so the uh, so so you need to understand that. 
every universities have different set of criteria. at the same time their fee structures will be different the scholarship ranges will be different and whether if you if that is something which you wanted to go into as well depending upon you know personal scenarios and situations for example So um, now this is on the on uh, this this slides are reflecting for last uh, four or five years uh, the demand for different kind of programs we have found uh, from international students across the globe, not just from Canada or from Pakistan. Uh, so probably some people though, who have an interest uh, in from Saudi Arabia or Malaysia, for example. Um, this is just to give an idea about some of the programs and some of the universities which are offering them because. For example, there are 131 universities, as I mentioned, but if you're going to a business program, every single university might be having that, right? So you can't you know, look around for the program and go into the university website. So it's, it's obvious that every university most likely will have that program. But if you're going to a very specific programs like pharmacy or medicine or physiotherapy, uh, not every university will be having that. So it, this slide gives you a pretty decent idea, like you know where you should be looking into it. Some of the popular programs for pharmacy in the universities, like uh, for medicine, you can look into Pronal, which they're offering there, as I mentioned earlier, a uh, pharmacy program, uh, medicine program from 2021. So again, if you're not sure which universities are uh, are you know offering that those programs, do contact us. This is our website, and this is our con uh, our WhatsApp number, which you can contact for a prompt response. But uh, uh, as I mentioned, there are various options available in the university. So scholarships, which uh, uh, quite a few of our partners offer. Um, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, Bangor is one of the universities in North Wales. Uh, they are offering at undergrad level about 8,000 pounds. Now, 8,000 pounds is a split into three years. So 4,000 first year and then 2,000, 2,000. And now, again, by the time I'm talking, maybe the scholarship application deadline, um, uh, application seats have been have been gone already. But this is how it works: that most of the students with a good academic criteria, with a good GPA percentage, they would be qualifying for this uh, for this uh, scholarship. So uh, keep an eye on the deadline. Keep an eye on the on the requirements. And if you have any question about that, feel free to contact us for that. Uh, Bangor is another offering, like as I mentioned earlier, it's called Vice Chancellor International Scholarship. And um, their deadline is May 15th, actually, which is, uh, I think, which is today. Um, so most likely, if they are not extending uh, extending their scholarships deadline for this one, uh, it's, uh, it's done. Uh, but we will keep you posted if you wanted to know more about it. Sometime university, because of the current scenario, COVID-19, uh, things may be a little bit flexible and the deadline will go, uh, they may extend the deadline. So you can see that there are various of the scholarships available like this. Uh, I would like to mention this about a scholarship in terms of, you know, uh, progression in scholarship, like every year you get the same amount. Now, Ulster University is guaranteed that you will get 6,000 pound scholarship for, for bachelor's program. So if you get a 2,000 pound scholarship and if you're entering into the math undergrad program, you will get 2,000 each year. Whereas, whereas if you apply to, say, for example, universities, um, you know, for example, Kiel, that's a significant amount of scholarship for three years, which is 2,500 each year. The only thing is that you need, in order to get the same amount in the second year, you need to meet certain GPA or percentage uh, from year one. So say, for example, I, I mean, if they, if they need like a, a 60 person in your year one, I'm just giving you an example here. Uh, please don't quote me on this one, but just an example, like if you need a 60 person to get 2,500 pounds in the second year, that is what your criteria is. So if you get 50 person, you probably will not get the scholarship, which is 2,500. So you may get some scholarship depending upon the discretion, but that is how it is. Whereas in Ulster, it's a guaranteed route. Of course, the scholarship is 6,000 pounds compared to 7,500, but that's a guaranteed route. So these are a few of the scholarships uh, uh, in past. We, I mean, every single student, uh, we try to help in terms of as much as a scholarship they can get as per their academics. So this is very important to understand that it's not just every student will get the scholarship. It is very important to understand, okay, UK is easy. You know, we will just apply and get a scholarship. It's not 100% like this. It's always like when you are applying what program you are applying, what kind of academics you are. So. It is very imperative to understand that uh, uh, scholarships, universities are ready to give to you 
anything from 1,000 to 3,000 pounds guaranteed scholarship. But at the same time, you wanted to make sure you, you get most of it, right? So in order to do that, please contact us uh, if you're applying for September 2021. Universities in the UK are still accepting September 2020 right now. So there's no late access because of the scenario. And it's like you can still apply. You can get an offer within two weeks. And then, of course, you know, we move to the next steps of uh, scholarships and applying for study permit. So you can see the scholarships are, are from our students who have got various scholarships from universities for physiotherapy in Ulster University, psychology with uh, counseling specializations in Bournemouth for 3,500 pounds. So it varies from university to your university. And um, I'm happy that they, they basically avail these all the scholarships. So these are these are the uh, most contact details for us. But but if you're on our Facebook uh, live fan page, you will be getting our updates regularly, and you know how to contact us. But these are most uh, if you if you want a very quick response, the best way to connect is through our uh, through our WhatsApp, and uh, one of our counselors uh, will be able to reply to you as soon as possible. And um, if you want to contact me directly, I will be available at head office. But our admissions team is very very. Uh, active and they they make sure the response is given within 48 hours especially at this time of the year when things are very challenging um or we are making sure that students who are inquiring us especially those who are very serious looking to apply for september 2020 we make sure your applications have been prioritized and at the first level so if you're looking for September 2020, please do contact us. Uh, it is not too late. We still are accepting applications. Our partner university is still ac accepting application. We can guarantee that if things goes well and, um, you know, in terms of you still can make for September 2020. Uh, but you are more than welcome to ask any of the queries and, uh, you know, uh, uh, through email, through WhatsApp, or if you, you know, if you want to connect us through Facebook, we are more than happy to help you. So I will now like to go through through the questions if you have any in terms of uh, in terms of uh, study in the UK option, and we'd like to see and see if we, if there are something to answer. Let me just go through one by one, and then we see from there. So one of the questions mentioned by uh, by uh, one of the followers on Facebook is Duolingo accepted. Well, Duolingo is in, for those who doesn't know, Duolingo is in, uh, let me see if you guys can hear me. Can you hear me? Okay. So one of the questions was asked uh, that, uh, is Duolingo accepted in uh, as an as an English proficiency level? So, Duolingo is an English proficiency test which is required, which is right now at this moment of time is acceptable by a lot of uh, universities. Now, it is just because uh, a lot they understand the universities are not uh, uh, the students are not able to uh, able to uh, go to uh, to appear in the IELTS exams or IELTS, IELTS center to appear in the exam. So quite a few universities are accepting uh, Duolingo as an alternative, which is an online test. And at the same time, there is another, uh, you know, some universities are also taking their uh, um, online test, which is made by themselves as well to assess their English, which is to assess Eng a student's English. So I will say, yes, there is opportunity, but it depends upon the university you're going into. And maybe like, for example, um, um, Ulster University is also offering an IELTS indicator, which is also another option for students to appear in. And these are all online, and it's uh, it's uh, acceptable. Just wanted to make sure on uh, Zoom if everybody is able to hear me. And those who are on Facebook, uh, are they able to hear me as well to their 
queries as well. Okay, so the second question I can see uh, from Said, how hard it is to get to work in the UK. Now, in terms of uh, part-time part -time work you're talking about, which is 20 hours, um, well, it depends upon like what kind of you know efforts you are making for yourself too. Now, as I mentioned, while you are applying to study in the UK, you really have uh, less time to you know uh, to work, which is 20 hours a week. But at the same time, it is like you need to make sure you're spending more time on your studies. And if you are looking to apply for uh, part time, for example, or 40 hours during the summer, it's I will advise to do more. Uh, you know, time on on establishing networking and making sure you are connected to the right people. So of course, sometimes when we are into the you know into a, a peer, you know, we probably probably try to follow whatever our other friends in the same circle are doing. For example, we need to understand that when you are in a in a country which is new to you, we try to learn from people from different different uh, segments as well. Either through you can you know you can be part of LinkedIn for example you can do some voluntary work for example you can connect with your universities universities are very good in terms of you know helping you out in terms of you know guiding like what support you need in terms of finding the jobs they do they do have like job shops uh, in their in their um, in, in the universities and uh, the student support counselors are really helpful in terms of you know guiding you in terms of where you can apply in terms of your skills you have. Uh, your communication level you have so i will suggest the best the best advice is that you probably uh, the best thing is that not only just look the website in terms of making an application or going to the job shops but also you know building up a relationship a uh, uh, a connection um going out of your comfort box to make sure that you are uh, you know being considered or you know whenever somebody's thinking about a particular role they might be thinking about you because you have been connected with them they know your skills this is very imperative that you should be telling them uh, about you know what you can do what kind of experience you have or uh, what kind of skills you have so let me see on the questions oh uh so I believe one of my counselors have already replied to this thing. Uh, so I did my bachelor's degree through distance mode, whether UK universities accept Indian distance education for masters because I did my bachelor's degree through distance mode and it... Right, well, um, so you so the question is that you have done a uh, you have done your bachelor's in distance learning and uh, you wanted to look into the mass um, so you did your master's and bachelor's degree through distance learning and you are planning to do the master's in business management in the uk now as far as the universities do recognize distance learning degree equivalent to their bachelor's degree uh, full-time bachelor's degree you shouldn't be having a problem with that now it varies from university to university it's a, it, um, to to accept or to consider your uh, your bachelor's and master's degree which is done in distance learning for example as far as it's equivalent to three years bachelor's program of the UK you will be eligible to apply for eligible for master's uh, in business management now, I don't see why it will not be equivalent to because you already have a master's degree from UK. It doesn't matter if it's a distance mode as far as it has the right number of credits from your from your education. Please send us your documents um, at uh, uh, one of my colleagues is going to mention the contact uh, details for like admissions at studentsolution.co.uk. Send your documents there with your resume and let us see what we can do for you. But definitely it shouldn't be an issue. You will be able to apply and uh, at the master's level. And we can get back to you on this once we are, uh, we, we, once we get the response for this one. Oh, okay, you already been answered with this one. All right, so the other questions I have on Zoom is what about OSA for Canadians? Uh, very specific for, uh, this is provincial loan which is uh, applicable to students who are in Canada in Ontario. Yes, OSAB uh, does uh, provide you the study abroad loans to Canadians. 
you have to be either on uh, Canadian, uh, either on PR or on or Canadian national to apply for. Uh, it's not going to be hundred percent. It varies from anything, you know, anything I think from uh, up to, I would say 10,000 Canadian dollars, or I think it recently has increased a bit, but it's up to that. You won't be able to get maybe hundred percent of it. So maybe like 6,000 or 8,000, like I have seen my students in recent times, they, few of them have received up to 8,000 Canadian dollars to study abroad. So it varies. The amount varies as per personal circumstances. You may qualify for OSEP, you may not qualify for OSEP, or you may, have, if you qualify, it's not necessary that you may get the full amount as well. So when you're applying to study abroad, you're definitely looking for, for either a bit of scholarship. It's a kind of a mix of things, a, a bit of scholarship, provincial loan maybe, but saving is the most important thing or a sponsor for your education so uh so definitely you won't be able to uh you know kind of expenses abroad is is like about twenty five thousand dollars to thirty thousand depending upon the university you're going into uh, you definitely need kind of a sponsor as well as a bit of saving you can't be 100 percent dependent on on the scholarships or osap or the provincial loans Uh, it's more like an, uh, I would say, uh, individual response. Uh, so yeah, I would say if you can contact us on the email again, it varies from city to city. So the question asked was about if you can give a, a little bit idea about UK living expenses. So I would say if you probably can send me uh, an email about it and we can you can look after where you are looking to apply it. The answer varies from individual to individual. And you know it can varies from university you are going to the city you are going to, and you know what kind of accommodation you want to do stay in, for example. So and if you wanted to, if you like to share, uh, you know, in a, live in a shared accommodation or living, you know, just separately, for example, those kind of things can uh, can be vital factors in terms of you know your rent and your um, expenses, kind of expenses, how much you're paying. But uh, definitely, if you if you send us uh, uh, an email uh, or our message on WhatsApp, I will be able to explain in terms of like what you are looking. Of course, it varies from city to city and where you are looking in terms of accommodation. Um, let me see if we have other questions. So as per current scenario, do you think the universities will be running September session? At this moment of time right now, uh, as we are getting close to September session, I would say right now everything is being considered as normal and universities have advised us that uh, they, are, uh, they are at this moment of time considering will, things will get better. But some of the universities are thinking to, uh, in fact, some of the universities have implemented this, that they will be doing an online uh, September session. And uh, so this is one way or the other. It's a good opportunity that you don't, you're not missing your September session. And at the same time, you are saving your costs in terms of your accommodation by staying home and doing online. But the other side of the thing is like, of course, you know, I mean, you will be missing the really international exposure, going there and, you know, uh, talking to students, uh, talking to the lecturers, attending the classes in person will have a different impact. But uh, yeah, so universities are right now uh, very optimistic and they are looking forward for the September session. And uh, as I mentioned, things will get, uh, you know, uh, better. And if you if you wait for the applying to apply for admission, things will be very slow at that time because it will be very, very busy at the university side. So if you are thinking to apply now, this is the best time so that you get an offer. You have all the time that you can always make a decision to defer your application for next September or next year or next session. But at least you have an offer. You have something in your mind that, okay, we can, I can still make a, uh, I'm still considering to go in September and I'm ready to go. So I will still advise that yes, the universities are, are still running the September session, make an application as normal and then move from there on. So this is more general question that are there any universities that I can apply without IELTS and TOEFL? Well, depending upon individual scenarios, it's not about the universities is uh, uh, offering admissions without IELTS. It's just about if you have a uh, three years, uh, three years, you know, if you have graduated in past three years and if you can provide uh, an English proficiency letter, 
um, that will, you know, serve the purpose and the IELTS will be waived. And this is applicable for most of those, of course, which are applying from countries, which is not an English speaking country, right? So, uh, so yes, so if you do want to waive your IELTS requirement, firstly, there are no online options like Duolingo, for example, there is another has IELTS indicator uh, as one of the universities mentioned to us. But at the same time, if you have an English proficiency letter from your recent education, recent, a recent institution, which you have graduated in last three years, uh, you probably your IELTS can can uh, can be waived. Uh, of course, that varies from from place to place. For example, uh, some of the Indian students we have a process application, and their application was from uh, their education is from, for example, um, from uh, region Tamil Nadu. So that varies from university to university, and how it it is on a general basis. If you have an English proficiency letter um from an from institution from last three years it is possibility and this is only applicable for master's program from undergrad unfortunately you have to do uh a duolingo or online test so i think this is uh this is it we don't have any other other questions i believe um Okay, so yeah, coming back to that distance learning mode question, definitely you are eligible to apply for MSc. Please contact our admission team and they will be able to you know, look into that in more detail. All right, so I think that's it. We don't have any more questions on, on uh, Zoom as well. And uh, we are good to, and if you have any questions and if you feel that you have, uh, you know, sometimes students may remember that they may bring they have some questions which was not answered or for example they they remember some questions that was forgotten and they have to ask please 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 contact us uh, uh contact us on our our email address i will be able to uh, to answer them any of your queries and again uh, the email address is uh, either of these you can contact us and i will say for a very prompt response um our whatsapp number would be the most uh, uh, most uh, important one for you to have have so that you can get the answers very quickly on a study in the UK. So I hope you have uh, gained a lot of information from uh, UK. I know it was a lot of information in very short uh, short period of time, but uh, please feel free to contact us and we will be able to answer them uh, individual inquiries. Thank you very much, guys, for participating and for coming and joining our presentation. Those who attended uh, on Facebook, on Zoom. I uh, really appreciate your time and uh, we are looking forward to this kind of uh, seminars on a regular basis and um, hopefully uh, uh, we look forward to uh, you, you know, if, uh, uh, answering any of your queries. Thank you very much for your time. I speak to you soon. soon. Thank you.